So I'm joined here with Randy again, and I got a comment from Ian Y Boy, Ian Ya Boy, saying, I can sort of understand addressing YouTube comments, but it also feels a bit like giving a platform to the lowest common denominator, lowest effort trolls out there. Going back through your videos and reading the comments, there are wonderful, well-reasoned, and well-thought-out responses that I feel are much more deserving of spotlight and could just as well further the conversation. Great video, but can we please give a little bit less of a voice to the folks eating paste? Randy, can we do that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not even sure what his question was. <laughs> so, um, his question is, can we focus on the positive? Well, that's, I, I, I never do that. I never focus on the positive. Well, we're going to try. I'm Brian. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. So I did find some good comments. There's lots oh. of them. And uh, if, if anybody wants to leave some more good ones or bad ones or crazy ones, uh, I don't charge to allow comments. That's a little thing I do. So Ares Vern says, Tesla using video to teach. Boston Dynamics robots use programming to teach. Learning from human actions to teach tasks is faster. Optimus bots learning to use human actions to learn task. Watching is learning. Example data from human drivers is teaching cars to drive. What do you think of this advantage? I mean, Boston Dynamics has a bot that can do parkour, but can you teach it a task? Yeah, so I think it's a huge advantage. In fact, I just had Scott Walter on my show uh, yesterday, uh, and we talked about this very thing. We went into some detail about it, um, and basically there's four levels of uh, teaching available that Tesla has. A couple of those are, well, they're not 100% unique, but they're certainly at a more advanced stage. So you have the actual uh, tell it to, uh, whether that's verbally or textually, you can tell it what to do. Uh, number two, you can go to the level of, like we do with another human being, with a child, uh, do the task and then have the child copy the task. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can be wired up so that when you're doing the task, the it's uh, electrically, wirelessly telling the robot how to mimic the task. And then finally, you can do uh, the, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, where you have simulations going on, where you can now do massive numbers of simulations, uh, giving it all kinds of variability and edge cases. So Tesla has got strength on three of those levels and is all by themselves on that first level of actually, uh, or first two levels of this is how to do it, just follow, just follow me. I feel like Boston Dynamics is still playing a game from 10 or 15 years ago unaware that AI has become a thing in the last, certainly five years, but especially in the last one year. This is an advantage that uh, could make all the difference in the world. And I don't know how Boston Dynamics would try to catch up with it. They would so have Boston to partner Dynamics, with someone. So Boston Dynamics, he had that long interview with uh, Lex Friedman. And in the interview, he basically said, we're not planning to try to catch up with anybody. You know, we want to make 100,000 robots a year, a couple hundred thousand robots a year, we'll be happy. Uh, I think what he's failing to take into consideration is that his robots are going to cost 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 dollars a piece to do the same thing that a competitor could charge a lot less for. Um, on the other side of the coin, the market, the TAM for these robots is so massive that I think in the first few years it's probably not going to matter. Uh, Boston Dynamics will find their uh, customer base uh, Tesla will try like crazy to even come close to filling the demand that they will have if they're charging, I would say, even if it's 50000 a month, I mean, a year, even if it's 50000 a year to lease the, the, uh, the product, uh, they'll never be able to fill their TAM. On a recent video with Herbert, he showed an example of a job in an actual Tesla factory that the bots could do. A man grabs a piece of material and places it for the robot arm to grab. But he gets too close and the sensor trips and he has to go back and reset it so that for safety reasons, the bot could work inside the cage. Yeah, well, there's a, I, there's a million examples like this. I will be starting to do a few. I just did my first video showing the examples of things that Tesla bots can do or the Optimus can do. This was a t-shirt printing factory. Um, and basically it was showing that the bot can place the, can place the t-shirt on the printing machine. It can remove the t-shirt from the printing machine. 
uh, uh, to the dryer. It can remove the, the uh, T-shirt from the other end of the dryer onto a table for folding. Probably could learn to fold the T-shirt. I wasn't willing to go that far. But even if you take those first three jobs times, oh, I don't know, there must be uh, how many hundreds of thousands of those T-shirt factories around the country and around the world in China in particular. Anyway, so yeah, massive, massive, massive numbers of jobs the bot can do right now. So, so Charlie Fox, a uh, friend of the show, good, good guy who's always in the comments, says, I think that the differentiator with Tesla on bots is designed for manufacturing. That is a primary purpose that will drive this to higher value faster. Even if they can only use this internally for a couple of years, that would still quickly provide a business value. Would you say that Boston Dynamics designed their humanoid robot with manufacturability in mind? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> no. No, it's a lab experiment. It's, they, they admit, again, in this beautiful, amazing conversation he had with Lex Friedman, He's, he basically says it's a lab experiment, and only uh, when they got bought out by these larger companies did they get in a position where they needed to show a profit. They needed to be able to sell something and make money. And he says, look, we can sell 100,000. We think we can sell 100,000 of these a year, a couple hundred thousand a year at 100,000 plus. Uh, that's making money. And I think they're primarily owned by Microsoft at this point. Uh, I could be wrong on that. I think so it's Hyundai. Hyundai. Oh, yeah, Hyundai now. Yeah, Hyundai now. And uh, Hyundai probably would be happy with that if they sold, you know, a c couple of billion dollars a year worth of product. And uh, what numbers do you think uh, Tesla bot is targeting? <laughs> I don't know what they're targeting, but this is my primary, um, my primary theorem right now. That's the primary th thing that I want people to destroy me in the comments. Please tell me where I'm wrong. Tesla would want to maximize their output as quickly as they could, can. I don't know any manufacturer, I don't know any company that doesn't want to maximize their output as quickly as they can reach the market with a product that works. If the, if the product is a, a compelling product at a compelling price, Elon quote, and I believe it's gonna be a compelling product to get a compelling price by the end of this year, then they're gonna to wanna to make as many as the TAM is as many as there are people out there willing to buy at the price they want to sell it for. And I think that is going to be a million next year. I do have a oh, caveat. Oh, wow. Next year. Ooh. Next year. I Ooh. do have a caveat on that. Now, so Scott Walter says, he says, he sees no reason from a manufacturing standpoint why they can't make a million next year. The caveat is I'm not sure whether or not they can do the customer service job of installing hmm. them and training them on site for a million robots next year, but they might be able to. That's just hmm. a matter of training the trainers. And you can hire and train those trainers pretty quickly. And I think it will only take about two days, maybe maximum three days per installation to put a, uh, an Optimus in a location, teach it how to do the job specifically in that location and train the employees around it to know how to work with the robot. I think that's two to three days maximum. So that would be, let's say, seven, six or seven a month per, per Tesla employee. So now you just have to multiply that and see how many employees you need. Well, I'm not going to share quite that much optimism. I think it, it's still a couple years out, but that it will ramp pretty quickly. Uh, Norm CFU says, the most interesting part of these bots is not the battery, it's the AI. Any battery could be used that would make the bot marginally less or more valuable, but there are a lot of jobs where the bot may need to move far. Putting caps on water bottles is probably one of them. We'll save that for later. Uh, the bot grabs a bottle and, and does all that. If the bot doesn't need to move much, it could be hooked to a power supply and never need charging. Just work 24-7. Let's talk about the battery life and the and the many ways you could charge it. <clears throat> yeah, I've never had any concern at all about the battery life. Uh, you, you have all the things that we already know that could be done. This gentleman mentions it could be plugged in, for, you know, all the time. Uh, some of us do that with our computers when we're working all day, it's always plugged in. Um, and then uh, you have the possibility of having an interchange. So while I don't think that is a way to do cars, uh, sorry, Neo, um, I don't think it's a good idea to take batteries out, put batteries in. Um, but it's certainly a workable solution on a bot. Um, and then finally, uh, you have two bots. Or if you have 10 bots, you have 12. You know, you have two that are coming in. You have a replacement 
while the bot sits out for a half an hour and gets charged up. There's all kinds of ways to do it. So on the cabled charging, one frustration I've seen people have is forgetting that they're plugged in and they go to move. A bot would not make that mistake. They no. are, I mean, it could make that mistake, but they're capable of not making that mistake yeah. in ways that humans aren't. I would make that mistake. I, I have made that mistake. <laughs> Another is inductive charging. Uh, there's no reason you couldn't have a few hot pads somewhere around. If it's at a workstation, it could just place its foot over the pad. Sure. And then... And then, yeah, hot swappable batteries. If it has two packs, just pop one out, grab a different one. It could be, you could just have stations around where it works. So it could just walk, when it's walking by anyway, just swap batteries. There's a lot of ways that that could work in ways that the Boston Dynamics robot dog Spot cannot yeah. because it doesn't have thumbs. Um, yeah. Uh, or a brain. <laughs> or, or a brain. Its brain capacity is limited to remaining on all four legs. Uh, so, yes. And then why plug in? Optimus could go wireless. Cables are on a restriction or confinement. Yeah, there's... It could absolutely go wireless. You could even... If, if power consumption is low enough, you could do inductive charging where it's uh, at a greater distance. Sure. Uh, it's, it would come down to, Elon doesn't like inductive charging because it uh, incurs loss. Uh, but if their power consumption is low enough, it might not matter quite as much. Yeah. Uh, so this is one of my favorite ones. Markelkin says, might be useful to add an extra arm or two. <laughs> See, I think for, firmly that, uh, I, how many times have you been on a ladder and asked someone to, get something for you or hold something while you're turning something or doing something. And for that matter, the extra arm could hold onto the ladder and keep two arms free. What do you think about extra arms? Well, there is definitely a, a, a need for third hands. So uh, I used to sell a product called a third hand tool. And so in the bicycle, in the bicycle world where, you know, I was for my entire career, in fact, still am in the bicycle world, uh, there's an issue with uh, removing a tire from a rim. If you've ever tried to remove a tire from a rim, you know you have to put one lever under and then you move over a little bit and you put another lever and then you need a third lever to do the third and then you go around and take the tire off. Well, when you, so that you, you need that third hand, you need a way to keep that first lever in position while you put in another lever and a third lever. Well, there's lots of situations like that in the world. Will that justify coming up with a three armed robot? Maybe and maybe it becomes a uh, uh, something that's five years from now, six years from now, seven years from now. I think this will be a one or two robot business for Tesla. They will have a short one and a tall one, or they'll have a, a you know, I don't know, but there won't be very many variations in the beginning because these will be so versatile. They'll be able to do 99% of what we would hope they could do. Yeah, when you hear people saying that, uh, other companies, this Tesla's doing something that all the other guys did 10 years ago, and they did it better. What do you actually hear them saying? <laughs> well, I hear them saying, what, what, what's, what's Tesla's lead from what I can see visually? But they're not thinking it through. There's no imagination there. And I think a lot of times those are individuals who have never worked in a factory or even owned a factory, worked in a factory, understand what it is to design a line are to create the work, uh, to, uh, to be an efficiency expert, I guess would be the best way to say it. That's one of the things that I consider myself to be as an efficiency expert. I go into factories, I help them become super efficient at what they do. So in the case of the bot, that's what I'm thinking. The first second that I saw the bot, the very first, the first it didn't take me, I mean, literally, my brain was on fire the first second I saw it because I'm like, that can do work in my factory now. When I say my factory, I sold it 15 years ago, but the factory that I own, that can do work in my factory right this minute. And it's like, I don't know why, I, I do know why people can't get the, the understanding that this is a versatile product that can be trained to do multiple tasks. It is not a robot that is hard wired in by software by coded software human coded software to do one task 
and then if you want it to move to the left an inch, somebody has to come over and put more coating in in order to get it to move to an inch. And if you want it to be able to do it a little bit faster, you have to have a coating <laughs> that allows it to go faster. I mean, everything you want to do that's different, somebody has to coat it. This is a, a product that will be, the software will be learning and teaching by verbal, we, we just went through the list. All these right. other methods, you can train it on the fly and it can train, theoretically, it should be able to train itself. And then once it's trained, this is the other thing that people don't think about, over the air update. So once I have one bot trained to take that t put that t-shirt on, a, on a, a printing machine or take it off the printing machine, once I've trained it to do it, that bot now has uploaded its information to every other bot that's ever been made over the air and now every other bot can walk into any factory anywhere that's got that piece of equipment and it's already ready to go. Yeah, the thing I think people are struggling with, one is there are people who just hate anything that's attached to Elon, fine. They won't be convinced. But I think the real struggle with understanding the difference is it's different. Anything new is hard to wrap your head around. And some people have reached a point in their life where they've decided, I'm not going to learn new things. I'm not going to try and understand them. If this was a copy of something, it'd be easy to understand. And if you look at it from the perspective of it being just a copy, it doesn't look very impressive. And I think that's, I think that's it. So, Randy, I want to thank you for coming on and addressing these positive points. Guys, leave positive comments in the in the comments below. You can do that. I know you have that ability. Prove me right. I beg of you for once. <laughs> no, our comments are not all that hostile. Uh, thanks, as always, to the patrons who get early access, bonus content, all that good stuff. Keep the channel running. Quite literally, thank you, guys. Could not do it without you. And everybody else, subscribe. Do the usual things. And uh, for the rest of you, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you on the next video about Tesla bots. Oh, well, what about a water bottle?